Perfect. All right, so again, my name is Kyle Hartman, and my senior year project was to create a website that focuses on the concept of coming out and basically um, people's experiences and stories while also providing information for that. This time last year, my idea for our senior year project was to create a curriculum for the American Sign Language program because right now it's only a year-long course and it, it should be considered a um, language because a lot of colleges recognize it as a language and there is a majority of people, a lot of people in this country that do use it. And that changed completely and SYP basically was this long road, winding turns and ups and downs that brought me to this, which I could not be more proud of and happy of. And yeah, so before I dive deeper into my SYP, I want to show you this video. It's only, I'm going to only show you about 40 seconds of it. It's called, I want, um, I want to Know What It's Like, and it's by Ryan James Yazak. And it focuses on the struggles of the LGBT community and the things that, and the, the emotions and thoughts that go through their mind. So I'm going to play about 40 seconds of this. Hopefully the volume's all the way up. Oh, nope. There we go. I want to know what it's like. I want to know what it's like oh. to be open, to be heard, to be loved, to be happy, to be me. All right. So I'm sorry I had to cut that short. It's a five and a half minute video. It makes a lot more sense if you go through it. But I just want to show you because I watched that video sometime in February. It came out about two years ago. And it was his um, documentary called Second Class Citizens, where he basically talks about the m minorities in America and really talks about their struggles. And that was just a clip from it. And that it just seeing that just showed me what the LGBT community really goes through. For those of you who don't know, I'm gay. I identify as homosexual. And um, that just like I could relate to a lot of that. And I tr tried to utilize as much of what they were talking about into my project, in my paper, and my actual website. Technology. All right, so my paper versus my project. So my paper focuses on the same-sex marriage laws and marriage equality in America, while my project actually focuses on the concept of coming out. While these two things are different, they're like in many ways. For example, marriage laws in America play a major role in the oppression of the LGBT community. Only 11 states actually allow same-sex marriage. Um, Minnesota just recently passed um, same-sex marriage. And the fact that people grow up knowing that they can't get married in the state that they're in kind of sets them back to the point where they don't really know where to go. And there's really a lack of posit um, positivity. Positivity, there we go, I can speak English, um, for people still in the closet. And it's really rough for people because they try to see these role models and these people that um, they can look up to in order to kind of live their lives to the fullest. but they can't because same-sex marriage is not allowed. There's a lot of laws. Don't, um, uh, don't ask, don't tell just got repealed. And there's a lot of laws that just really restrict the LGBT community. And um, I'm going to start talking about my paper. OK, don't know what's happening. I'm going to apologize in advance because unless this begins to start working, there we go. All right, now I can stand back here and I don't have to walk all over the place. So now my big three. The big three is what we call in SYP the topic, question, and thesis. And this is the big three for my paper. It's different than the big three for my actual project. 
And my topic was the legal establishment of same-sex marriage in America, with a focus on the, the court cases of Proposition 8 and the Defense of Marriage Act that are currently being deliberate, deliberated by the Supreme Court. My question was, how should the Supreme Court rule on the cases involving Proposition 8 and the Defense of Marriage Act? For those of you who don't know, Proposition 8 is California's ban on same-sex marriage. It was a voter initiative that um, came up about in 2008 after a court case declared same-sex marriage legal in California. And Prop 8 was basically totally repealed that and created a ban on same-sex marriage. It allowed couples that were already married to continue their marriage and continue getting the state benefits that they had. But couples after 2008, after the presidential election, um, were not allowed to get married. Defense of Marriage Act, on the other hand, was in 1996 legislation made by the Clinton administration. Prior to 1996, the United States did not define marriage. DOMA, which is the Defense of Marriage Act, on the other hand, defined marriage as a, this, a legal union between one man and one woman as husband and wife. So that, in turn, took away, to this day, there's 1,300 federal laws that um, relate to marriages that are that in order to be considered for those laws and those, um, those benefits, you need to be married, and there's, um, there's a relation between that. But Defense of Marriage Act um, diminished and um, took away all of those rights and laws away from the LGBT community. Same-sex couples no longer had access to social, secu social security benefits, um, health insurance. Um, I used in my paper a metaphor um, that basically took um, a same-sex couple, one was an employer, um, one was employed, one was not, one was a stay-at-home parent, and the employed, um, they had a child, and the child was the biological son of um, the parent that was employed. And um, in the hypothetical, this isn't real, I'm sorry, I'm not really this um, kind of devastating, but the, um, but the parent that was employed um, became, like, died, and they were deceased, and because they were employed, um, and, sorry, I'm gonna go back. The biological son was the son of the parent that wasn't employed. Sorry, it's complicated. So the parent that was employed was married to another man. The man that was stayed at home was the biological father of the son, and the employed party died. And because they died and they were employed and the, other, the um, partner was not, they, the partner did not receive partner benefits from Social Security and neither did the son. So um, living parent insurance and living um, child insurance was not included, neither was living spouse. And that's a major problem. And my thesis, which I'm going to go more into when I talk about my research, is marriage equality is a right that can no longer be denied to the American people, but we, we must tread with caution. And my research consisted of surveys of about 400 people. Um, their ages ranged from high schoolers to um, adults that were out of college and also college students. Um, and I gained insight on the popular, like more or less the popular opinion of same-sex marriage with this um, uh, basically 400 um, group interview uh, survey party. I was able to get a better understanding of what people actually thought on the matter because I was using a lot of my own opinions on the topic of same-sex marriage. And I also utilized a lot of news articles um, such as the Huffington Post, which has an actual section for the LGBT community, and the New York Times and a lot of other articles. And in my paper I discussed, I began by um, introducing my research and talking about what same-sex marriage is. From there, I went on to talk about the laws, DOMA, Proposition 8, and the court cases. From there, I talked about the opposition and the arguments against same-sex marriage, religion, um, same-sex couples can't procreate, um, same-sex couples are just trying, to, they, there's a homosexual agenda, and they're trying to turn our children into um, homosexuals as well. And all of those ideas, I basically found the holes in and I found how transparent they actually were. And none of the arguments against same-sex marriage actually hold any political or logical standing. And then I went on to talk about the arguments for same-sex marriage, which are all based on factual information and statistical information, such as the adoption rate in America, um, how if um, there's 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids that are still in the foster care system and they're de being denied homes because a lot in all, many states, in all the states that don't allow same-sex marriage, same-sex couples are not allowed to adopt children. So there's th hundreds of thousands of children that are left without loving and caring homes. And um, then I also went on to talk about the federal benefits that I mentioned earlier, and et cetera. And then I went from there to talk about which rulings would be best for our nation as it stands today. And from there, I gained these results on Proposition 8. 76.9% of the people were against Proposition 8 in favor of, basically, they voted to repeal it. And this is in my, sur my own survey. And 23.1% were in favor of it. So that just shows you that um, society today just really isn't all for um, bans on same-sex marriage. Obviously, I can't speak for the rest of the country. The majority of these people were from New York and Massachusetts, family and friends. Um, but in my actual research, a lot of people had different political opinions, religious beliefs, and you can see that 23% are still in favor of it. So you can tell that it is basically a, a good cut image of um, what people think about in our country. And then um, from there, I went on to say that the repeal, um, t the best option for the Supreme Court was to repeal the ban on the grounds that the defense lacks the necessary standing to appeal. This basically means that the defense that are, um, the people that are defending Proposition 8 right now, excuse me, I'm sorry. The people that are defending Proposition 8 are, do not um, have the necessary standing to appeal it. To, um, so the court case that declared um, same-sex marriage um, a legal right was then repealed by Proposition 8, which was then voted down by, um, the, leg by the legislation in California, which was then um, appealed by, um, then Proposition 8 was brought back. It's very complicated. California law is very confusing. I hardly understand it. And um, basically, the people, um, Proposition 8, was put into um, place, taken back, and all put into place one more time. And um, people are, um, the people that are defending it are trying to keep it in um, state so that California remains um, a state that doesn't allow same-sex marriage. Um, the result of this um, ruling for the Supreme Court would mean that um, California would allow same-sex marriage, but no other states would be affected. If Proposition 8 was declared unconstitutional, all state bans on same-sex marriage would be declared constitutional. And I found that very scary, even though that's a huge um, improvement for the LGBT community and it is a major stepping stone in our movement. Um, and I use our um, hour because I'm, I'm obviously a member. And um, it's, there's no membership fee, it's OK. But um, I, I looked back at Roe v. Wade which was the Supreme Court case on abortion law. And it basically declared abortion law illegal, uh, abortion a legal constitutional right. And all bans on abortion were then removed. And today, it's still a major political topic. It's 40 years later, and abortion is still a major topic in society. People vote on their senators, on their, Repub on their um, representatives, based on whether they're pro-life or pro-choice. That is not what we want for this community. That is not what we want for this movement. And that's why this is the best choice, because it will allow states to then decide on their own when they're ready. And another poll that I looked at showed that by 2020, 47 states will be in favor of same-sex marriage. It may not be the majority, but at least 51% of the people in that state will be in favor. And then my results for the De Defense of Marriage Act, 82.9% um, of people were against it, as in they wanted to repeal it. And 17.1 were in favor. Again, this is the, legislation, the federal legislation that gives a definition to marriage. And the best option was to declare the federal law unconstitutional in all regards, mainly because the Obama administration and the defense of the, court, of the case are against it. The people that are defending the law are, don't feel that it represents, um, that it provides Equal opportunity, which is the 14th Amendment right in our, in our Bill of Rights, the Equal Opportunity Clause, is um, equal protection under state law um, and federal law for any um, citizen. And the, um, all parties in this court case are against it. So it would make sense that it would get repealed, because if um, it was declared constitutional or if it was declared, um, if the 
uh, justices declared that they lacked the necessary standing to really make a ruling, inevitably the law would then be repealed by, um, through legislative acts. And the result of this would be that all same-sex couples in states that in the 11 states would be granted all of the federal benefits and the laws that require that are focused on marriage would then be applied to the same-sex couples and they, and they would be allowed to more or less gain what they didn't have before, what um, heterosexual couples have now. And that was more or less what I researched for my paper and what I found, the results. It was a great experience because I really discovered a lot of things that I didn't know before about the gay community, about the struggles, about same-sex marriage. I learned a lot in this paper and it was a very good experience. Now, on to the project because that's probably why you all are here. So. Those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. This is from George Bernard Shaw. He's an Irish playwright, and this is exactly how it applies. This is exactly what applies to my my SYP, and this is the mindset that I had throughout the entire time because I've changed my ideas multiple times, from the ASL curriculum to a documentary about homosexual um, uh, about homeless LGBT youth centers in New York City. I wanted to go down to New York City and film um, people that are in the youth centers that are there um, because they their stories are outstanding. People are still being kicked out of their houses in um, major cities in all over the country for being for coming out to their parents and um, these shelters act as kind of safe havens and I want to really show the stories but because it's in New York City because there's not many that are in this area and because I really needed to still be in school third term and also do SYP, I found it very difficult to do this. Regrettably, I was unable to accomplish this and it's sad, but at the same time, I feel like I've accomplished something even greater. And then I moved on to a documentary about people's coming out stories. For about three weeks, I was interviewing people um, about their coming out stories, getting information on um, how they experienced it. And then I realized, one, I don't have documentarial skills. Two, I'm relying on other people's schedules and it's very difficult when people don't really understand that you're on a deadline by this time right now. And it was very difficult to organize that and get people's stories. But because that happened, I was um, talking to many different people in SYP, a lot of different faculty, and we all came to the, idea, the conclusion that a website would actually be the best. So that's where I came up with a website that focuses on the concept of coming out. So I was able to maintain that topic while also turning it into something more tangible. So why a website? One, a website's everlasting. What goes on the internet stays on the internet. A picture on Facebook, a website, no difference. Nothing ever leaves the internet and that more or less makes this a permanent project. So I am able to utilize this project for the rest of my life and show it to people and work on it, etc. Also, it maximizes my audience. A documentary probably get about a 30 person audience unless it was like a really well made documentary which again I said I'm not good at making documentaries. I have no idea how to make a documentary. And this allows me to connect all around the world to people of all ages, everyone, so many people in this world have access to the internet. And that's why a website was really, really key. And I'm able to maximize the amount of stories that I want to get also because I'm going to talk about this later. There's a section of my website that allows people to share their stories and experiences coming out, being in the closet, or being a family member or friend of the LGBT community, someone who has come out or is in the closet, etc. Also, it's subject to change at any moment. A documentary is a final project product. Once that's done, I'm showing people what I've worked on this entire time. A website, I'm allowed to go back, get people's advice, get their edits, and go back and create a website that's even stronger. And then from there, create a website that's even stronger. And it's never ending. Again, it's everlasting. I, can go, I have an, um, an account on webs.com which allowed me to create this website. And they allow me to um, change whatever I want. Um, update the name, I can even change the URL if I'd like, and there's so many different options for a website. And also, I mentioned this earlier, the continuation after SYP is over. A documentary would end. This would not. I can work on this, excuse me, throughout college, throughout my life, and I plan on it. 
And that's what really excites me about a website. So going on to the what my, I researched for this actual website. Excuse me one more time. Talking makes my mouth dry. So I conducted interviews with NH, um, Newton North students, college students, and faculty and other adults in the Newton community outside of Newton and other faculty at the school. Um, I actually went the day after I finalized the idea to create a website, I went to talk to the GLC at Boston College, that's the um, Gay and Lesbian Leadership Council. And I basically laid out this plan in front of them, and they were in full support of it. I've gotten a lot of different um, feedback. I was able to interview a lot of them for their coming out stories. Regrettably, not many have actually submitted written stories or video responses or any creative stories, which are the options to do on my site. But I have high hopes again. And my interviews allowed me to really um, well, I'll get into that in the next slide. Um, and then I also looked at other websites. Can anyone tell me what Ask Abby is? No one? That's sad. All right. Ask, Ask Abby is um, a device column on Yahoo. And um, I actually learned about this in multi um, many of my actual interviews. And it, people basically like, Dear Abby, I'm sad from sad. That's really quick and easy way to describe it. And Abby would then respond, dear sad, blah, 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 from Abby. And it would allow people to um, ask questions and do all of that. And that's what everyoneisgay.com is. And um, everyoneisgay.com is basically a website that gives advice, focuses on the LGBT youth in our country, while also um, instituting humor and um, jokes and their experiences into the advice that they give. So it's a very positive site for people. I use that as a major influence of what I want to work on my paper. I'm, I'm in, sorry, my website. And I also went to glad.org. And GLAD is um, an organization that provides a lot of information for, um, on the LGBT community and for the LGBT community. And um, the one problem with GLAD was that they provide information on the community as a whole, where I'm looking at to provide information on coming out and things that people that are coming, um, going through the coming out process really need. There's nothing wrong with GLAD. I used it a lot in my research. I'm just saying it's not exactly what I wanted to do. So moving on to my interviews. In my interviews, um, I gained story. I learned about people. Um, one person, he was actually engaged to a woman and then came out and broke off the engagement and is no longer speaking to the woman. They're trying to reconnect now, but that was one example of a story. Another story was someone who came out through a letter to their parents. So there's a wide range of stories. And the really cool thing about this was that I learned about all everyone's different stories. And um, everyone has their own unique take on coming out. Um, if you want, maybe in the Q&A you can ask me how I came out. It's very embarrassing, so I hope you don't ask. <laughs> um, and then I also found out what resources they used while coming out, while being in the closet. A lot of people turned to chat rooms. Um, they watched movies, went on YouTube, watched It Gets Better. I hope a lot of you have heard of that. Um, does anyone, has anyone not heard of It Gets Better? All right, not a problem. It Gets Better is an organ. It's basically, um, it started off on YouTube as a way to show, um, it focuses on um, the bullying aspect of um, people in high school in the LGBT community. And it's basically saying it gets better. It may be rough now. You're being tormented now. But happiness will come and it gets better. And, um, and it's a really strong website. And a lot of people used it um, during their process coming out. But um, a lot of people turned to chat rooms. Um, I found that a majority of people turn to chat rooms, turn to dating websites, and all that stuff, which are, is probably the most unhealthy thing for um, people to do during this process because they're meeting people. A lot of um, inappropriate um, conversations are happening. A lot of um, negative feelings come about during this. And I'm, pr I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. But um, I also found out their recommendations for the website, um, appearance, content, et cetera. I, um, a lot of people said that I should normalize um, gay issues. So exa for example, my paper on same-sex marriage would be an example of that. Um, show celebrities who are um, Ellen DeGeneres, um, Frank Ocean, um, the list goes on and on. There's hundreds. Um, and then also, a lot of people recommended I add music because music is obviously um, the key to our soul. Um, comedy, because it, this is a time that there's a lot of sadness, a lot of depression, a lot of negativity. But if you add comedy to it, for example, Wanda Sykes compared coming out to being black. 
and she and because of a lot of the time people compare the um, LGBT community to the um, the black community, and she was basically like, I didn't have to come out black. I didn't go up to my mom and I wasn't just like, Mom, I got to talk to you. I'm 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 black. And then she went on this whole like five minute rant about her mom freaking out, and then she compared that um, what. I'm not saying that pe what people in the black community went through was not as hard as what people in this community are going through. It's just different. There's a lot of things that are similar, but you can't really compare them fully. Um, also, a lot of people um, recommended the story aspect of it. I, that was um, an idea from the beginning, so I agreed with them. Um, FAQs and links to other sources, because I don't know everything. I wish I did. That would be great. I would be a walking encyclopedia, but I don't. And that's something I have to keep in mind for this project. And that's why on my website, which I'll show you later, um, I have links to other organizations that could um, possibly act as more help for people that need it. And then also it gave me a better understanding on the different experiences people have. I mentioned that earlier. But people that go through this process all have different um, ideas of it, different views on it, different perspectives. And that's um, really what I found interesting about my interviews. I looked forward to each and every one. I was able to find different stories. And I connected with people in a way that I've never connected with before. So my online inspiration. I mentioned everyoneisgay.com, and I mentioned it gets better. So this is a combination of the two. It's a short one minute um, clip. It's going to be really quick. But um, before I start, I'll, I'll play the video, and then I'll describe their idea on um, It Gets Better. And these are um, the two girls that own everyoneisgay.com. So they're the ones that give advice. I'm and I'm Krista. And we are from everyoneisgay.com. We're here to tell you that it does get better and you are not alone. We have thousands of questions from people just like you. Teenagers, adults, parents, family members, friends from the LGBTQ community that are struggling with exactly what you're struggling with. Not only that, but I read that Dan and Terry received 3,000 emails the first day that they launched this project. So that should be testament to the fact that you are not alone. Yeah, and it's not just being a teenager and struggling. If you're any age, if you're in your 20s, if you're in your 40s, if you're in your 70s even, you are not alone. It's about figuring it out when you, when you figure it out. Yeah. Um, regardless of if you're 14 and you've just realized that you're gay or you're trans or you're bisexual or if you're in your mid-40s, uh, you will learn to accept that part of you. Um, but again, the most important thing to know is that there are millions of us out here that will love you, that will accept you, and that will understand you for who you, for who you are. Sorry, cut it a little too short. But that's um, basically, um, everyone is gay. Um, I wish I could include their promo video on my um, slideshow, but Vimeo is actually non-compatible with Google Docs. But um, in that video, they talk about how It Gets Better is a great project. It's a wonderful organization that helps people that are um, going through struggles and gives them hope and optimism. But everyoneisgay.com focuses on what their situation is now. Everyone is, um, it gets better, shows you what happens in the future. Everyone is gay, gives you advice on what to deal, on how to deal with your problems as they are happening now. And that's a major difference, but at the same time, a major similarity between the two organizations. And they gave me a lot of inspiration in creating my website. Again, um, I watched tons of It Gets Better videos. I went on everyoneisgay.com. I read their advice. I saw what they included on their website. Um, some of the designs on my website actually mimic theirs because I was just so in love with their website, and I just thought it was an excellent idea. Um, technology. There we go. All right, now competition or motivation. So during this process, um, when I started off, I was like, there's no other websites like this. I've never seen one. I spent four years in the closet, and I never found a website like this. Well, there are. And um, actually, um, I got very nervous when I found these websites because I was like, all right, now I have to completely change my SYP idea again because I don't want to copy um, other organizations, other websites, and create something that's very redundant. In this, EmptyClosets.com, they haven't updated it in four years. It's a website that allows that provides that focuses on coming out, but they don't allow people to share their stories. They've only shared about three stories, and a lot of them are very obscure. Um, but they also include forums which allows people to talk about what they want to talk about. And forums get very similar to chat rooms sometimes. And when I was going through it, I saw that a lot of the conversations that were happening were extremely inappropriate and weren't exactly helping people. They were just kind of prolonging the um, despair. 
And um, a lot of the information actually was very invalid because it hasn't been updated in four years. So the website no longer acts as a source of information for people. And I kind of want to take their mistakes and create into what I can make better. And also the website was just completely unpleasant to look at. It was a terrible design and not flattering whatsoever, which is very important when you design a website. It's, um, for example, um, someone is also creating an app, and it's all about the um, initial design. When you look at it, it either draws people in or pushes people away and they no longer want to look at the website. And then I also found outofthecloset.com. When I saw this link, I was like, OK, it's another website that's going to help people that are coming out. What do I do? Actually, no. It's a, it's a website that consists of a single letter. Um, the copyright on the website is from 1994 to 2000, so it's no longer um, actually um, being used and updated because it hasn't been updated since 2000. But it is a single letter from um, a homosexual individual to his friend that just recently came out. And I read the letter, and I, um, it's about four pages long. I wish I can include it, but um, I wish you can all read it. But again, it's four pages long. That's about, for me, that's about six minutes of reading. Um, and in the letter, he talks about the different struggles. Um, he said, um, by lying to, um, he talks about coming out. He's like, by lying to themselves and others, people are hindering themselves from actually succeeding in life and making their life actually more. Um, just better all around. And um, this really just kind of, ins instead of um, being something like, all right, cool, I have to compete with this, it inspired me to keep going with my project. And it also allowed me to include other things. It provided me with um, ideas to go for my asset, for my paper, and also for my project. Um, and then finally, there's areyoucomingout.com. This is true competition right here. And I hate saying competition because we're all in this together. We're all trying to help people that are coming out. This is a website that's based in England, Ireland, and Scotland, and Wales. I think that's already in England. I never really know. Um, and um, basically, it allows people to share their stories coming out. And um, it was a major inspiration of mine. But also, I saw that this is in England. That I've, there was no post from people that are in America, not a single post. It had someone that used to live in America that lives in England now. But no posts from people are in America. And I want to focus on what's happening in America now, because we're getting to the point where everything is finally coming together for this struggle and this movement that in maybe, like I said, 2020, majority of states are going to be in favor of same-sex marriage. Hopefully, by 2020, people won't be bullied in high school for being gay. People will be accepted for being gay and all of that. And I really want to focus on what's happening in America now. And um, that was really my competition and my motiv um, motivation from other websites. And now on to mine, my baby, my closet door, theclosetdoor.org. So it's a single source of information, a place to connect the dots. That's my motto. That's at the top of my um, website. It's a single sor source of information for people that are coming out, still in the closet, people that are friends and family members of other people that are in the closet or coming out. And it's also a place to connect the dots. You search all around the internet. There is It Gets Better, Everyone is Gay, all of these different sites that provide information, but there's no source for you to go to that allows you to find all of those sites in one place. It's My website kind of acts as a source of information for people. Like I said, it's a single source of information, a place to connect the dots. Makes sense. So contents of my website, stories and experiences. Um, there, Like I said before, there are three options. Um, you can talk about your experience coming out, experience in the closet, and experience being a family member or friend of someone who's come out. And um, one of the, uh, um, I, so far I have two posts on that, two um, uh, submissions for their stories. One, I have a third that's a haiku that I'm posting to the website later today. And um, it's only been the third day since this um, has since I've published my website and then talk more about um, how public it's gone um, in another slide. But so far, I have only two posts. It's sad, but it's two posts in three days, which is awesome. I was just expecting, like they said, um, the people that created It Gets Better got 3,000 emails in their first day um, publishing the project. But I'm a high school student. They used YouTube and videos that um, I give access to millions of people. And this I shared with my Facebook friends and my Twitter friends and all of those. And social media um, is a great way to um, connect all of that. 
but I'm not friends with hundred or with billions of people like YouTube is. So um, I have high hopes. And then also, um, I have a section for parents. Um, and include, um, when I go to show you guys my website, I'm going to talk more about this. But um, my motto is: There's nothing wrong with your child. Um, nothing you could have done could change um, who they are. There's nothing wrong. They are who they are because that's just how they are. And I talk a lot about that in a um, thing I wrote on the parents page. And they also have um, FAQs and LGBT terms. That should be LGBTQ terms because I also talk about questioning and queer and um, every other letter of the alphabet that has been accepted from, um, by the gay community. And um, sadly, my FAQ section is not up to date. Um, it's, if you um, go to it, it says under construction. Sorry for the inconvenience because I don't want to publish that until I get every single question that I could possibly get. And um, I'm getting there, but I don't want to keep updating it and doing that. I want that to be a static, um, static section of my paper because the questions haven't really been changing. And um, that I just want to get exactly correct. The LGBT terms, I um, talk about gay, what gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, um, female to male, male to female, what all of these terms mean. And again, I'm going to show you that when I show you my actual website. I also have links to other webs, other, organ, other organizations. Wow, I'm time. Um, other organizations. Um, I talk about everyone is gay, it gets better, etc. All these different sources. And then I have a section for media. It's um, a section where people can um, look at different music, entertainment, and film and television. All of these things have links to the LGBT community. They all pertain to it, whether the artist is. Um, of the community, or like Malcolm Moore and Ryan Lewis singing um, a song that's sing, rapping um, something that's never been accepted by the um, rap community, hip hop community, and talking about same love, the legal establishment of same sex marriage. So um, that's media, sorry about that. And now I just want to show you, I'm going to give you a quick preview of what my site is. What? There we go. All right, so this is my site. I'm going to minimize this. And this is my home page. Um, I'm going to sit down, I'm sorry. So my home page um, basically has a link to Boston Pride. It talks about what is Closet, um, closet Door. It began as an individual project created by a student, myself. Um, what's our vision? It talks about what I've talked about in my actual presentation. Um, a place to share. Um, so I can get maximum number of people to um, look at my website. And then also BuzzFeed, LGBT. BuzzFeed is um, this kind of news and um, entertainment and life and style site um, magazine. It's like an online site that um, they actually have a Twitter feed that talks about issues in the LGBT community worldwide. For example, Michelle T and the queerest ya um, YA, young adult young adult novel. Um, I know that YA meant that you will ever read and it gives links to that and it's a very good um, place for people to go for updated um, topics and kind of it acts as um, a newsreel, more or less. And then stories and experiences allows people to submit their story right here. It's initials and age because different age groups go through different things when they're coming out. And initials because I want this to remain as anonymous as possible. While I may know their actual names from the email that they submit, no one else will. And I will maintain that confidentiality. confidentiality. And then also um, stories and experiences coming out in the closet, friend or family member, um, and a place for them to share their story. And then they can submit written responses, video responses, or creative pieces like poetry, short films, et cetera. Um, there's this one short film that actually um, switches um, the sides. So instead of everyone in the society being heterosexual and the minority being gay, it's switched. And it shows what a heterosexual goes through while they're coming out. And, like, and it, basically gives a better perspective for people that may not understand what people in the gay community go through. This, my posts are going to be um, uh, divided into months. This is the post I have from May of 2013, um, being in the closet, in my opinion. Um, one sentence that really stuck out to me here was um, the person said, I wish that no one would bat an eye if a dude marries a dude, or if someone decides they want to dress differently or be called by different pronouns that then society automatically assigns them, or if I say that I would totes go to prom with Naya Rivera. And um, this person is talking about, um, in their story, their experience kind of coming out, but also th realizing how coming out shouldn't be necessary in society. We shouldn't automatically associate our children with being heterosexual. We should be open to ideas. Um, their rooms shouldn't be blue and 
pink based on their gender. They, um, purple is a neutral color, and there's many different things that they talk about in this. Um, I'm not going to go into that just for time's sake. And then a section for parents. Um, I go on, this is a link to PFLAG, which is an organization that um, is a great source of information for parents and family members and friends of um, lesbians and gays. Um, I go on to talk about what exactly is an ally. I got this from glad.glad.org. Like I said, it's a great resource of information. Um, and it's a list of nine things for heterosexual people that are friends or family members of people in the LGBT community and how they can be better allies, how they can talk to them, um, et cetera. And then it can be hard. Like I said, there is nothing wrong with your child. There is nothing wrong with your child. Um, I basically give a paragraph of describing that it can be hard. I understand that you may be confused that your child is um, not normal, but there is nothing wrong with them. They are natural. And then I give um, links to all of these books that talk about um, different parents' experiences, different children's experiences coming out. And I read all of these books. They're all, excuse me, allergies. Um, they're all excellent. The one I recommend the most is Now That You Know. That's the one I read. That's the one I gave to my mom. And it works very well. It educates them on things that they wouldn't have been educated on prior. And then I, um, I LGBT terms um, here um, that just gives all the definitions. FAQ, like I said, is um, still under construction. And this is the media, music, entertainment, film, and television. It provides information on all three different aspects. Um, these um, entertainment and film and television are still under construction, but music is not. And um, basically, I um, have playlists, the gayest compilation, compilation ever made. Um, it's from everyoneisgay.com. It's songs that are funny about um, people being gay, et cetera. Um, anthems, the gay community accepts, um, has a lot of songs that may not pertain to them exactly, but they use them in their movement. They chant them, they sing them during pride parades, etc. And they mean a lot to the gay community. And then also music videos, same love, brave, um, noise, and it does get better. These are all songs that artists created. This is the L Project. It's a, um, a project in England that consists of all lesbians. But these are all music videos for songs that um, really pertain and are directed towards the gay community exactly. And then these are a few artists that um, identify as a member of the LGBT community. Um, Queen, I understand that not all of them are gay, but they still identify, um, they still are related to that community. And that is more or less my website. I wish I can go um, into more detail, but um, you guys can go to theclosetdoor.org. And, um, and I just want to talk about my response real quick. Um, so the clicker is here. So on Facebook, I got 150, 85 likes, 187 by the of looks of the website, um, what's at the bottom, and 30 plus shares. Um, I, on Twitter, I got five tweets. One, was the, one of them was mine, but people are um, favoriting and retweeting them all. Tumblr, I already have 10 posts on Tumblr. And webs.com, which, which is the website I'm using, I already have a 980 views on my website. So the response is great for the past three days. Um, it's going down a little bit, but that's because everyone was like, oh, cool, let's look at this. I've already seen it. Now other people are going to be um, given the opportunity to look at it. And people, a lot of my friends are helping me out with this. A lot of um, people are sharing it, um, posting it to their sites, et cetera. And with all of that, I'd like to thank you for being here. SYP was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. Um, I have no regrets in this project. I hope to continue doing this. And I just want to thank you all for listening to me and understanding what my project actually was. Now, question. Now, questions. Are your folks involved at all in No. Um, no. My, uh, I told my mom about it, and she was like, oh, that's cool. But um, it, my family's still kind of uncomfortable with my sexuality. But with time, that'll change. And they're not really uncomfortable. Like, don't talk about it at all. They're fine. But um, certain things like this, like I told them about. But when they want to see it, they'll see it. Do you have experience creating websites, or did you get help? Because it's very well put together. So Thank you. Impressed. Um, I actually have no experience, and I didn't have any help. I did this all on my own. Um, Webs.com allows you, it um, has widgets that you can drag onto the page and edit and all of that. The website has a lot of glitches, but not my website, Webs.com, but um, it was a learning experience. It was really cool. Um, I know you have a section on your website for parents um, of kids who are coming out. Do you think um, this website could also potentially um, 
be a source for um, friends of these people that may or may not um, be comfortable with the idea of same-sex marriage? Or yeah, definitely. Um, I have hope, like, like I said, this is ever um, changing. It's, I'm going to keep editing it. I want to add a section to that, but I don't have enough information right now mm -hmm. to put it on the website. I'm looking for books and other information for people. But um, as of now, I have the maximum information on parents, but I don't have on friends. But I hope to add it to it. You said earlier in your presentation, Kyle, that you know part of this, the research paper that you did was, and then, then creating the website was to kind of find all the political arguments against same-sex marriage and poke the holes or kind of like see through all the kind of arguments. Can you get an example of one or two interesting perspectives or beliefs that you were able to see through? Yes. Um, so, for example, pro the um, idea that marriage is for procreation, that's why it's between a man and a woman. If we're de um, determining laws based on people's ability to procreate and have children, and that's why we're denying rights to the gay community, then we should not allow people above, um, that have gone through andropause or menopause, menopause to have children. We should also not allow infertile um, couples to have children. With that logic, that applies to them also, and we're not denying that at all. And um, you can't really deny one thing based on this argument to a certain um, group of people and not deny it to another group of people. Um, another argument was the homosexual agenda. Um, people, uh, Michelle Bachman stated that she feels that when people talk openly about their homosexuality, that they're influencing our children to also become homosexual. Hom homosexual. Homosexual. Um, and um, that's a major problem because that reflects what um, a lot of people believed the black community um, would do to the white community back in the um, 1960s. There was um, Thurmond, I'm forgetting his first name, but he was a senator, um, governor of North Carolina for a while, and he believed that um, by um, assimilating the black community into the white community and accepting them and integrating them into our um, lifestyle, um, then um, they would also influence our children and um, cause people to really um, move towards the black community rather than the white community. And that, of course, didn't happen. Um, people in the black community are still oppressed. And um, while people are, while people in um, suburbs and inner cities are um, listening to rap and hip hop and all of that, they've accepted that as an um, equal um, relation. Like, there's still white rappers. There's white hip hop artists. So that is a. Um, basically an argument that's completely flawed. There's no evidence saying that by talking about homosexuality, by adhering to the gay agenda, by allowing same-sex marriage to happen, we will hinder our children. Like I said, we will actually provide opportunities for families um, to be complete through adoption, et cetera. All right, that's all. Thank you so much. Thank you.